everybody, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Welcome to a new playthrough video. Today I'm playing 2D6 Dungeon. <coughs> um, I am picking up where I left off last time, which is I made my way back to the entry room. I'm down to 58 health. And uh, the reason being is I had to pass through this room, which took off two hit points. Uh, it was like a cursed room. And now I'm in the entry. So um, I am now at 5,000... Uh, an 11 um, XP, actually it was 5,012. I don't know how that got shifted. 5,012 XP. To make it to the next level, I have to hit 10,000. Oof. All right, so it's gonna be a while. I'm gonna be at level six for a little while. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am in this room. I'll go ahead and roll. Oh, by the way, before I forget, I transferred all of my possessions and everything into this small book where I'm keeping track of my rations, my gold, uh, random items I've found, and then, of course, the scrolls and things. I'll, it'll help me stay a little more organized. All right, let's go ahead and go. I rolled a 3-3. Three, three. Now, that is a double, so I get to add, I roll it again. And by the way, I'm going through the north one. So 3-3 three, three added to this will be 7-9. A 7 by 9. Ooh, that won't fit. Let's uh, do 3, 4, 5. Let's do this one. I can do, I can do 7 by 9 here. So 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I can almost do it. And I'll do 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is a large room. Wow. Uh, large rooms typically have cooler things and more dangerous things. So for level six, large rooms, uh, I have to roll on page 68. Page 68, this is just a simple 2d6 and you add it. That is an 11. An 11 is a kitchen. Well, you know, every good dungeon needs a good sized kitchen. So let me go ahead I am out of paper here, so I will go ahead and I should keep some blank paper. One second, let me get a sheet of blank paper and then I can continue on. Here we go, all right. So again, this is level six. And this will be room number, I got up to number seven. So this will be room number eight. And number eight is a large kitchen. You've got to feed a lot of monsters and a lot of bad guys. All right, the kitchen says, this is a large, well-equipped space. Most of the equipment is useless and old, but you do find a pot, two turnips, and some Elios petals. Roll on I, oh, I didn't roll for it. Roll on IAUT3. How many exits? One. All right, so I'll put that one to the north like that. And I've already found the, the secret chute back to the surface over here, so I won't be looking for those anymore. Um, so let me go ahead and write this down. That's kind of funny. I've got some turnips, a pot, pot, turnips, and pot to, and some Elios petals. All right, so I've got some more Elios petals and uh, Elios petals and roll on IAUT3. That's an interrupt. IAUT3 is on page 64. Let's come over here and roll 2d6. Green is high. That is a 4-1. Four, 4-1 one. Four, one on the interrupt part three is part of the wall here has crumbled to the ground forming a pile. Someone has begun repairing the damage with lime mortar and some of the fallen stones are stacked. There is a tea chest here you can search. If you do, roll on TCT1 and then roll a D6. On a one to two, stones tumble down and you lose two HP. Well, it's worth a chest. TCT1 is a tea chest. TC, let me find out what page. TCT1 is on page 31. And um, let's go ahead and roll the D6 and see if I lose two HP. I do. All right, so I'm down to 56. But more importantly, what is in that T chest? T chest number one right here, roll two D6 and add them. That is an eight. 
The box is full of wood shavings, but beneath this are some random, random metal items. Roll on MIT-1 and MIT-2. These are just going to be junk. MIT-1 and MIT-2 are page 15. Metal items. All right, MIT-1, MIT-2. MIT-1 is a forged blade. Hey, all right, I'll take that. Forged blade, that might be something I have to donate or give away. Forged blade. And the other one is a six, which is a snapped sword blade. Snapped sword blade. Finding a lot of useless junk, but again, in this game, sometimes that junk can help you with donations and things like that. All right, that's a lot of room for a kitchen. So I tell you what, before I go heading this way, and by the way, this was a wooden door, I believe. Let me go look again, page 63, or what, no, it was a large room. Large room. Level six was the kitchen. It was wooden doors, yeah. So a wooden door, is it locked? Five is only reinforced doors are locked. So it is unlocked. And I'm gonna backtrack and go through this corridor right here. And it is a three, three, so I've gotta roll again. And that will be a five, eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'll just, I'll, I'll do a, I'll maximize it as best I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by five, one, two, three, four, five. All right, there we go. I had to reverse the, uh, how many doors? Uh, that is two, so I can put one here and I'll put, eh, I'll just, I'm just gonna make it just be one door and that will be that. All right, because I can't fit it, I can't fit it without interrupting with this room right here. All right, what is this room? It is a 2-1. This is a 5 by 8, so it's also a large room. Level 6 large rooms. I rolled a 2-1, which is a 3, which is a divine hall. Number 9 is a divine hall. And it says, this space is lined with pillars. So pillars everywhere. And expansive mural. If you have more than four FP for any god, I do not. And you feel inspired, gain another FP as a result. It's got archways, so this is an archway. And let's go ahead and see where it goes. It goes to a corridor, 1-6, which is going to dead end right here. So that is a dead end corridor. All this is dead, all this is stone. All right, so we'll backtrack to here and go through this unlocked door. That is a six by four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Man, this room, this uh, dungeon is tight. And four up. One, two, three, four. All right. Like that. How many, uh, how many doors? How many exits? Uh, two, so again, I'll just put one here and roll to see what this room is. It is a five, two, this is room number 10. Five, two, and five, two on the level six rooms is a loop, looping object. On a table is a warping object. There's a table here, and there's a warping object. You see it change every split second as if trapped in a loop. Uh, archways, so this is an archway. It says, um, you can try to grab it on a roll of d6. One to two, it's a knife. Lose three hit points. Three to four, a stone. And five to six, a gold bar worth three d6 gold. Um, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's try it. Um, that would be, roll a d6. Don't roll a one or two. I rolled a one. <laughs> so I take, I take three hit points. I'm down to 53. 
53. All right. And this was called a looping object. And it doesn't look like there's any encounters in there. All right, so we'll go through that door. It is a five by three room. One, two, three, four, five by three. How many exits? Three is one exit. We'll put it right here. This is a very weird dungeon. I love when these dungeons are sort of weird, like they just, you know, who would build this? It's kind of crazy. All right, what type, this is room number 11. And what is in here? It is a 6-6, six, six. okay. 6-6 six, six on the level six rooms is a drying room, of course. Gotta have your laundry done. Drying room, 6-6, six, six. it says, Hanging here are at least 30 animal hides. Blood covers the floor. They are too wet and heavy to take. You find a workbench upon which is a sharp knife, a bowl of water, and a cloth. Roll on IAUT3. Okay, IAUT3 is on page 64. IAUT3. Roll 2d6. Green is high. That is a 3-3 which is a quick, short burst of wind alerts you to some movement to your right. You, you turn to see a screen of darts shooting towards you. If you have a shield of any type, you quickly crouch behind it and take no damage. I do have a shield. Otherwise, even if you have metal armor, you take four hit points. Well, I do have a shield, so didn't do that. So this was darts. Darts. No damage. All right. Uh, the door, what type is it? You roll that on page 63. That is a 4-5. Four, 4-5 five. Four, five is metal doors. So it's a metal door. Metal is solid. Is it locked? 5. Only reinforced doors are locked. All right, so it is unlocked, and I will go through it. That is a four by two room. Uh, one, two, three, four by two. How many exits? Probably just one, yeah, one. One's all I can fit in here. And this is room number 12. What is this room? It is a five, three. Level six rooms, five, three is a warping mound. Okay. Warping mound. I'm gonna have to figure this out. Some of these rooms are linked. Like it'll go 4A, 4B, 4C. Like 4C and 4B are, are linked. Within this space is a large mound of fluid rock. Two figures seem to be controlling it with their minds. You must fight an afflicted Uh, afflicted and a raptured shimbe, whatever that is. I love these names. Raptured shimbe. Um, if you survive, roll on CT4 and rune 2. Well, I hope I survive. Check out the new RPG and Wargame newsletter. Each week, the tabletop engineer shares news, products, kickstarters, and much more related to the gaming hobby. It's free to subscribe, so check out the link in the video description below to sign up. Okay, let's find those cards. Afflicted right is right here. It's a level three. And it has 15 health. And the Raptured Shimbe is not a level four. It must be a level five. It is a level five, and it's got 40 health, and I'll just track it in tens. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's check this out. The, the afflicted has, uh, the afflicted has one shift. So one shift, and it blocks on primary ones, twos, 
and fives and sixes. Wow, it's got a lot of blocking. All right, one, twos, fives, and sixes. Uh, the Raptured Shimbe with 40 health has two shift. It blocks on primary twos and sixes and secondary twos and threes. Secondary two, secondary three. All right, let's attack. I have 53 health, and I now have three different maneuvers I can use. I roll a 1-6 with three shift. I could get that to four, but I couldn't get that to four. I also can't get this down to a 1-2, so I miss. By the way, this is turn number one. And I was attacking the afflicted. The afflicted swings with a 2-1, which with one shift can make that a 2-2 which is D3 plus one damage. However, I block on primary twos, which is, what is the primary two? No, I don't block on primary, that's his. I block on secondary twos, excuse me. <laughs> secondary two is minus two, it's my helmet. So this will be a D3 minus one. D3 minus one. Uh, that's a 2 minus 1 is just 1 damage. I'm down to 52. And then the Raptured Shimbe attacks with a 5-5. Five, five. With his 2 shift, he can get this to a 4-5, which does Energy Blast, D6 plus 3. However, I do block on primary 4s at minus 2. So this is going to be a D6 plus 2 damage. Ooh, 6 plus 2 is 8. I'm down to 44. 44. That was a good hit. 44. All right. I, uh, turn number two. I will swing at the afflicted. I get a 2-2. Two, two. I will... Now, I've got to look and see. He blocks on primary twos. He'll also block on primary ones, so it doesn't really matter there. Um, if I change that with three shift, I can't change it to a 4-4. Four, four. And I can't get it six five, so it is. It's going to remain a one. It's going to be changed to a one two, which is d six plus six, and he blocks on primary ones at minus one, so it's d six plus five. Three plus five is eight, so that was a good hit on him. Five six seven eight. Now he swings at me with a two six. With one shift, he can't turn that to a two two or a six four. He misses the raptured shimbe. Oh, 6-6. Six, six. That's a critical prime attack. It points at your arm. If you have hand or arm or arm armor, it melts off and is destroyed. Uh, I have leather bracers, which remove my primary one and my secondary six. Oh, they're gone. Okay, just like that. If you have hand or metal, yep. So the leather bracers are gone. Okay. That was a good, good, good attack. I will swing and turn number three at the afflicted. I get a three five. Um, I will turn that into a four four with my three shift. He doesn't block on any of those, so it is a full D six plus five. Six plus five is eleven, and the afflicted is killed. Whoa! All right, he goes away. Now it's just you and me, Raptured Shimbe. He swings at me with a 3-3. Three, three. With two shift, he could make that a two, but he can't make that a one, and he can't. He could make this a four, but he couldn't make this a five. He misses. Turn number four, we each get one bonus shift. I swing, and I get a one six. With four shift, I can make this a one two. Now he blocks on secondary twos and threes and primary twos and sixes. So he blocks on the secondary two, which is minus two damage. So it's D6 plus six, minus two, D6 plus four. Two plus four is six damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, he swings at me with a one, three. He can change that to a one, two. He cannot get it up to a four, five with three shift. Uh, so with a one, two, 
Transformed hand, D6 plus four. I do block on a secondary two. Secondary two is a helmet, minus two. So that's gonna be a D6 plus two. Five plus two is seven. Man, I'm down to 37. He's hitting hard. 37. I We are at turn number five with two bonus shift. I rolled a two four. Um, I don't want him blocking on anything. Could I make that a six five? With five shift, that would take this to a one, and I would need four to get this to a six, and I do have six shifts, so four. And I could turn this to a six five, which does my most damage, D6 plus seven. Now he does block on a primary six at minus three. Ugh. So that's gonna be D6 plus four. Three plus four is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he takes another hit. And he swings at me with a one six. He has four shift. He can get that down to a one two, which again does D6 plus two. Eight damage down to 25. This guy is getting me good. All right, 25. Uh, turn number six, and we're at three bonus shift. I swing. I got a one three. I, with six shift, five and two, and that would get a D6 plus four. But what else does he block? He doesn't block on four fours. It still knocks it down to a D6 plus four, but I can do D6 plus five if I go to a four four, which he will not block on. Yes, let's do that. I will change this to a 4-4. Four, four. I should have done that last time. And it's D6 plus 5, and he blocks on none of this. 1 plus 5 is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to add his last row of 10. And he will swing at me. A 4-6. Now, with 5 shift, it would take 3 to get that to a 1 and he would have two left. So he can't get it down to a transformed hand, but he can get it to a four five, which is a energy blast. I do block on primary fours at minus two. So that is a D six plus one. That's only two damage. That's better, 23. Uh, we are on turn number seven. He does not have any, oh, he does have a quick sway which is his secondary. So this is movement based, so this goes away. He no longer blocks on these. And that starts at turn number seven. I will swing at him. I got a three, three. Uh, obviously I wanna do the four, four because he will not block. He will still block on the six, so that would knock this down to a D6 plus four. So yeah, we'll, we'll change it to a four, four. Always take the time to do the math and figure out which of your attacks is gonna do the most damage. Uh, that is a D6 plus 5. 6 plus 5 is 11. 1 and a whole row of 10. Gone. Nice. All right. He swings at me. A 3, 5. With 5 shift, he can get this with 3 and get that down to 1. He can turn it to a 1, 2, which does D6 plus 2 damage. Three plus two is five. I am down to 18. 18. Okay. And now we're at turn number eight. It doesn't matter. I've still got the three shift. Let's attack him. That is a one, three. <clears throat> With six shift, one plus three is four. I can change this to a four, four, which again, he doesn't block on, and it does a D6 plus five. Four plus five is nine. He's got one health left. And he swings and does a two one. He can turn that to a one two, which does the most damage, which is D6 plus two. Three damage, I'm down to 15. And hopefully I can finish him off here. With a two six, I'll make that a four four which is D6 plus five, three plus five is eight. He dies. Ugh. 
All right, the raptured Shimbe gives me 500 XP and the afflicted gives me 85. So plus 585 XP, which brings me, I hate doing math in my head this early, but I think I can. It, this will go up to 5,500 85 plus 12 is 97. All right, so 5,597. 5,597. Five, okay, let's, uh, let's do the treasure stuff. Roll on RPT4 for the Shimbe. RPT4 is a religious pouch, I believe. RPT4, religious pouch, page 26. And there's no modifier. Religious pouch four, roll 2d6 and add them. That's a three, empty, great. The afflicted is roll on pouch table two, just PT2, which is on page 23. Pouch table two, roll 2d6. Seven, 3d6 silver, that is 12 silver. And 2d6 gold, nine gold. Okay, all right. We are down to just a couple minutes here. So let's, uh, let's figure out what type of door was in here. That was room number 12, which was um, a warping mound. It is an archway. So let's see what's on the other side of it real quick. Oh, a six by six. Nice. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. That's 36 squares. So I'll just do a five by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And how many exits? Five is two. So I'll put one here and one here. We have reached almost the end of the dungeon. So in the next episode, I will probably find the stairs down to level seven and I'll figure out what these two rooms are. But let's figure out what this room is. This is room number 13. Room number 13 is a 6-4. Six 6-4 four. Six four is an infernal sanctum. Okay, that doesn't sound good. Infernal sanctum. <laughs> infernal sanctum. Four orbs float above a black fog. Lightning crackles from each hitting the fog. Arms raised an infernal cardinal. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Infernal cardinal. Floats into sight. A bolt of energy hits you. Lose five hit points and then fight. I'm down to ten. I'm going to have to give up my first turn to take a potion. Wow. Metal doors, 80%. I don't know what that means. 80% chance there's a metal door. So that would be, if you roll a d10, that would be only a nine or 10 will keep. Yeah, it's metal doors. All right, so there's metal doors. Are they locked? Four. Metal doors are locked. They are locked. All right. It's gonna be interesting to figure this one out. All right, so in the next episode, I will be fighting a Infernal Cardinal. He must be a level six. Oh boy. Where's an Infernal Cardinal? Oh, he's a level six. I had him in that, had the alphabet wrong. It wasn't an alphabet. Uh, 50 hit points, 950 XP, two shift. Got a lot of shielding. Primary ones, twos and fours. Secondary two, threes and fours. He does 2d6 damage with his blade cleave. Oh. All right, join me in the next episode when I fight this Infernal Cardinal. <laughs> we will see how this pans out. These enemies are getting much, much tougher. All right, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me on this game of 2D6 Dungeon. Don't wait too long. I, you won't have to wait too long. I will be back very soon, probably a couple days with the next episode. Until then, everybody, take care. <laughs>